for us as well when it comes to growth marketing. Um, data is a huge part of uh, our daily uh, tasks. We have to look at everything before we make uh, a, what we call an informed decision, and it's informed because of the, uh, the data that we have in our hands. But my question is, I've had some uh, experiences with uh, some of my coaches or people that I've coached or uh, the participants that we've had. And uh, it's tough for them sometimes to know what type of data to look at or mm -hmm. where to go mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, data, uh, which analytical tool or uh, what type of data. We also, we know that we have quantitative and we have qualitative. So when it comes to the quantitative part, what we uh, usually teach is that uh, it tells us what is happening. Mm -hmm. And the qualitative part basically tells us why what is happening is actually happening. So my question is, where do you look for data? I mean, how do you prioritize when it comes to experimentation? What do you look mm -hmm. at in order to make an informed decision? And how much is too much, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like you could look at all the, all the metrics. You could look at, uh, uh, I don't know, the CPC, the uh, number of sessions, uh, uh, the bounce rate, yeah. and then say that, okay, based on what I'm seeing right now, uh, I want to uh, start with this experiment and mm -hmm. then that experiment and then, but how do you actually start? Yeah, so it's kind of two things you bring up, the, the what and the why. Uh -huh. I think from the quantitative perspective, looking at your user behavior, um, tells you kind of what they're doing, whether if you're looking at analytics on a website or within a product, like you can see what they're clicking on, mm -hmm. where they're going after step one, two, three. But the missing piece of that is the qualitative aspect of it is like, why are they clicking on this? Why are they skipping this step? Why are they even coming to us in the first place? And I always advocate that the best way to actually answer that question is to go directly to the source. Ask them. <laughs> go and ask them. Um, yeah. it, it, it baffles me with some companies and they have a huge customer base yeah. that love their product. Will, it's so much that they're willing to pay for it. But when it comes to answering the question of why they've done something that they fail to actually talk to them, it's almost like they're scared to talk to them. Maybe scared of the truth. Yeah, like, exactly. In some regard. <laughs> it's like, I don't uh, want to know why yeah, you I don't, don't like know, my website. I don't know why you <laughs> want, like this and everything. Um, so for instance, one of the things that, uh, that we worked a lot at, at Bunk was at the, with the marketing and the product team, like we were not fearful of talking to yeah. customers. Uh, we were not, I was, I was in a position where I knew what was happening in my ramp of responsibilities. For instance, in my team, the website was one of those things, improving the conversion rate of that. And we saw what things were happening, but we didn't understand why. So we did a lot of work and okay, how do we actually identify what questions need to be asked? Uh, what things do we believe will best allow us to improve our primary metric? Um, and then how do we actually source this information from people that we've known yeah. are, are, are engaging with us on the website? Um, so the answering the why part uh, is really important when it comes to e experimentation. Yeah. Um, one of the things that in previous companies I've saw with starting an early, early experimentation program, we were talking about this earlier, um, what I advocate for is understand the hurdles of experimentation to begin with and understand the mistakes before you jump in it. This is very applicable, especially in big corporates, yeah. I would think, because there's a lot of, um, uh, kind of those minefields. The hurdles. Yeah, <laughs> a lot you of minefields you can like, come across uh, when it comes to it. You want to tread lightly in these situations. Where early stage companies are very different. It's kind of the opposite. Yeah. It's like go, go, go yeah. uh, all the time. But the hurdles and the mistakes that I've seen with starting early experimentation programs, one in particular is this huge gap between perception and reality. Uh, most of the time, uh, people perceive experimentation of bringing this particular value immediately. Yeah. But the reality is that for early particular programs, you have to get the ball rolling um, in order to start to get those, make those big bets and get those, those rewards. Um, the other is a lack of data fluency. Yeah, um, which is a, a, a huge skill set that is needed within the growth marketing realm. And it's not something that should be offloaded into people in um, analytics. So understanding like how to sift through data, 
but also understanding what questions does this data prompt you to ask, yeah. and then having the need to go out there and actually answer those respective questions. Um, the other one I would mention, specifically on the B2B side, yeah. is that one mistake that I've made in, in, in previous roles was trying to start an experimentation program where, for a company, we haven't found product market fit. Yeah, that's uh, which is, which, which is very difficult. And here's why: with experimentation program, at least when you're running specific tests, no matter what you're testing, obviously to kind of, as we call it, as we say, it, call the experiment complete, you need to reach a certain level of statistical significance, right? But when you're in a B2B company where the sales cycle is long, it's focused on establishing long-term relationships. You run, you may have one touch point with a customer, let's say today, but they may not purchase you until a year from now. That affects your learning process. Like in addition to not getting as many kind of top of the funnel leads, yeah. that reduces your sample size for effectively calling a test as we, as we say. Um, and this is one of the things that I've seen in early stage experimentation programs that are specifically within B2B companies, especially if they have not achieved product market fit. Um, and so what I advise for companies that are in that particular position is in growth marketing is that there are still some things you can do to kind of properly set up experimentation program. Make sure your infrastructure is, is good. Make sure you're working with necessary third parties to lessen the internal effort required to build these things yourself. Um, run AA test, which is basically testing to see if the infrastructure you put together is working. Because there's nothing that I hate worse than you run a test and it's no the stage void is not set. because the stage is not set. You just wasted resources, time, and possibly a good idea um, because your infrastructure wasn't set up properly. Yeah. Um, these are some of the things that I've seen in early experimentation programs. And when it comes to B2B companies, it's even more difficult because of those things.